the advice I got was to get to the train tracks. So, so we start by taking this guy out. Oh, level up too, that's nice. Oh, that'll kill him. I need to get Don Horde healed, I think. So I have to be careful with him. Hi, Unknown! How are you? Hope you're having a nice Monday. Thank you for tuning in. I'm doing all right. It's been a busy day, but it's nice to relax with some um, Sega Saturn this afternoon. Or evening already, I guess. It is 6 o'clock. Hmm. Let's try this out. Have I ever been to a console launch event? Um... Let me think. The only one I can think of was, strangely enough, uh, Nintendo 3DS. And that's because I was working in the industry at the time. I was um, in the buying team for Big W video games, so I got invited to go to like a Nintendo launch event for it. But that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, I think that's the only that's the only one I'm pretty sure that I've been to. How about yourself? Have you ever been to one? Or do you plan to go to one? That's a lot of hits. Nice work, Cyclops. Yeah, it was really cool. It was um they had like the new games. What did they have? It was it was coming out, it was brand new. They had Street Fighter 4. They had the Zelda, I think, Ocarina of Time remake. And was it like Metal Gear Solid 3? Had a 3DS release as well? I think that's what I saw. And you got to play them like before they released to the public. And people from Nintendo were there to sort of explain it all. It was, it was interesting. It was a lot of fun. I think I've been to a few game launch events. Uh, I was definitely at the Street Fighter V launch event that uh, Ozhadu put on. That was that was pretty cool as well. We got to play the game against a bunch of people and you know try it out. I think it was like a day before or maybe a week before release. It was it wasn't too. It was very close to the release anyway. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. There might have been a few other things when I was working, you know, in like the buying team, but that's all I can really think of. They're the ones that stick out immediately anyway. Oh, really? I think I think it was I don't want to promise anything, but I think it was Metal Gear Solid. From memory. I thought there was, there was some kind of metal, or maybe it was Splinter Cell. 
Oh, I don't recall. I'd have to look it up now. It was one of the launch games anyway. It was some sort of, like, stealth shooter game. Um. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've heard of, like, some crazy stories that happen, um, at these things. I think my ones have, like, been a bit more low-key. Like, I know, like, a brand new console launch is probably a bit, a bit more hectic. Compared to something like a 3DS, like Press Night, or you know, in, like sort of Nintendo sponsored one. Hmm. I think it depends on where you go, right? Like, I think if you go somewhere and you're sensible enough, and you know, you should be fairly safe. But it, it depends on how much. I guess it also depends on how keen you are, because nowadays when you pre-order things, you're sort of guaranteed to get it anyway. But they can, I'm sure they can be a lot of fun, is the difference, right? Some of those, like, launch nights might be um, a lot of fun to go to. I know some of them do, like, free pizza and all that sort of thing. They make, like, a, a fun event out of it, so... So all that stuff's cool. Hmm, yeah, definitely. Wow, seven years, eh? Hey? It's been seven years since the PlayStation 4. I never actually owned any console from this generation. I didn't have a Switch, I didn't have a PS4, and I don't have a Xbox One. It feels so recently like it was that it came out. I can't it's crazy, it's seven years. I remember when console generations seemed like they used to be every four years. Oh, no, maybe not every four, every five, I'd say. Although it makes sense to have longer console generations. I think it's a good thing to stretch them out a bit. But yeah, they're good consoles. I just never really... Um, I don't know, I guess I just... There wasn't anything that I was... Oh man, so many Cerberuses. There wasn't anything that really drew my attention so much that I wanted it. In terms of consoles this gen. Yeah, exactly. The longer the consoles live, the better, I think. Ha! <laughs> Thanks for joining Fiery. Yeah, this game is still going. We're near the end now. Uh, you also got to remember that this game is actually like um, a trilogy, right? So it's three games that I've been playing back to back. And I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? Hope all is well on your end. Now this is where I feel like I should have kept that tornado. I'll use this though. Oh, eight magic points? No, maybe I won't. Does anyone here need healing? I should check first. Not really. I'll heal Proton just for the heck of it. Oh, actually, maybe she's got to heal herself. Yeah, that'd be better. Oh, that's good, man. Work can be pretty tiresome now. I don't know if you're working from home as well, but I find that working from home can be a bit draining. But glad to hear you're doing well. I was just thinking the other day that it's been so long since I've uh, caught up with any of my fighting game friends. With good reason, I guess, you know. No events or anything happening, so... Looking forward to all that being over. Yeah! All the, all, all the Oz Hudu guys. The Virtual Fighter guys, the, um, the Oz Hudu staff, the SNK guys, all, like, everyone, really. Yeah, I didn't go to the last local either, actually, uh, Fiery. 
I, uh, I skipped it. I can't remember why. If I had something on that day or something. But um, yeah, it's been like this since February. Although I was planning to take a break from fighting games for a little while anyway. So I mean, like I was sort of mentally prepared because I was taking a bit of a break. But it's still, you know, kind of sucks. Can't even go to the Battle Cat Bunker or all those like, you know, local meets and everything. But it's alright, we'll be back. Oh, nice dodge. Did it really? I haven't seen any, I didn't see anything about it. I tried contacting the owner as well. I tried contact, um, contacting Stefan and never heard back from him a while, a while ago. Oh, it's good if they're reopened. I gotta reserve a seat. Uh, that would make sense. I was gonna say, they must have like. Restricted seating or something, right? This is a pretty tough fight actually, just because everyone's res respawning so much. At least he won't get put to sleep again. Well, I feel if you have to reserve a seat for Tekken, you've probably got to do it for um, for every game. That's true. Sydney's blessed to have plenty of popular games. I was actually thinking about what I can do to try and make um, get people playing Virtual Fighter again when it all comes back. Because I know it is it is hard when you can't play on um, you know your main console. I'll have to see how easy it is to emulate as well and see if that's an option for some people who want to play the game and don't have a PS3 or an Xbox 360. Depending on how often I can come back, I guess. I mean, I'm sure I'll go to events and stuff, but I don't know if I'll... I'll be uh, there as much as I used to be. Probably depend on how many people are keen to play, how much time I want to dedicate to organising it. But it is a lot of fun. The only annoying thing is that, like, most of the new games that come out haven't been appealing to me uh, lately. And the one that was, which was Samurai Showdown, like, SNK seemed to botch that PC release so badly, unfortunately. I'm sure it's good. Like, I'm sure it works fine and everything, but, um... I'll give up on the healing drop. The fact that it came out so late and is, like, still charging full price. It's a bit... it's a bit rich, really. Without the DLC included. Oh, the fact that it's on Epic Game Store probably doesn't help. I mean, I don't mind too much, but I know a lot of people... That's an instant... Uh, instant no-buy for them. What have you guys been playing in the chat anyway? I remember last time uh, um, uh, Fiery was playing... Was it Tales? Uh, not Tales. What's that? Oh my goodness. What was that game uh, you were playing? It was like a remake. The Last of Us Part 2. Oh, 
Oh yeah, Shenmue 3. That was a fun game. I did really enjoy that. Like, I, I definitely think Shenmue 3 was nowhere near as good as Shenmue 1 and 2. Like, it was... Which was sort of expected because, like, you know, Shenmue 1 and 2, huge budget, big publisher. He had the AM2 team working on it. Shenmue 3 was small budget, brand new team. You know, they hadn't been making games for a long time. Well, Yu Suzuki hadn't been making games for a long time. Um, but I was, I, I was really pleasantly enjoyed Shenmue 3. Um, for what it was, it was quite nice. Like, it was still really engrossing and it felt very different. Like, it, it lost a lot of... I think it still lost a lot of what made Shenmue special. Like, the combat, I really didn't like the combat. I thought the exploration wasn't as good. I thought the story wasn't... Like, a lot of things weren't as good as Shenmue 1 and 2. But there was enough in there that felt like the old games. That it still felt very unique. And it still made me smile. With, uh, you know, with the same sort of enjoyment that I had of Shenmue 1 and 2. And so for that, I really enjoyed it. Oh, please don't put him to sleep. And it was funny, because, like... I, some of my distinct memories were, like, just little things in Shenmue 3. Like, some of the mini-games, um, collecting... Like, collecting some of the, um... Ah, oh, crap. Please don't fall asleep. Oh, he did. Uh, collecting some of the herbs and stuff. Like, that was all pretty fun. Alright, let's spark these guys. Yeah, I gotta say, the second city, Niawu, was um, disappointing for me. And again, that was... Like, I think some of it was just bad decisions, but some of it was also low budget and, like, limited time, etc. Um, it didn't feel authentic. Bailu, the first village, or first town in Shenmue 3, felt good. It felt like Shenmue. But, um... Yeah, Niawu just felt weird, like, it didn't feel authentic, it felt like a theme park, if you know what I mean. Like, it felt tacky. It didn't seem like a real place, whereas everywhere else in Shenmue feel, feels real. Yeah. So that was a bit disappointing, but again, not enough to, not enough to ruin the game for me, just, you know, I've got to be honest and point out the flaws. We're getting hit with a lot of... A lot of enemies here. Alright, let's try... A spark level 2. That might actually kill most of these guys. Then we can save Grace here. Oh yeah, that should do it easily. I love the magic effect in this game, it's so good. Now we've just cleaned house here. Oh wow, he and Bridget are now soulmates. That's pretty cool. I'll have to go and check to see what that actually means in terms of uh, their gameplay. Alright, let's equip this and attack one of these. Alright, so let's have a look and see what Soulmate does. Friendship with Julian. Oh my goodness! Plus 15 attack. That is crazy! To put into perspective, when you level up, if you're lucky, if you're very, very lucky, you'll get plus three. Normally you'll get plus one. Sometimes you get plus two. So plus 15 is a huge buff. And what does Julian get from her? Bridget increases magic power. But it doesn't say how much. That's interesting. Okay, I can only assume it's a similar sort of enormous buff. 
That's pretty cool, actually. That's that's. I love the uh, the friendship system in this game. There you go. She just leveled up with Don Horde, actually. So let's see by comparison. Friendship with Don Horde is a friend. It decreases the chance of enemy criticals. Okay. And she's a oh yeah, trusted with. Uh, Julian, which gives her plus 10. That's really good. I think Trusted is just before Soulmate. Ally is the the standard. Everyone is allies. I think Partner is the basic one, and then you get Friend. So even Friend is pretty good. Then it must go to Trusted, and then Soulmate. Alright, that's cool. Got a very close-knit group here. Alright, let's try this one out. Oh, energy fall. Excellent. I wanted to, I wanted my two knight characters. Oh, crap. Alright, we gotta get into this treasure. I was gonna do it a bit later, but I may as well send everyone in now. Actually, I think a level 2 might do it. The the treasure and like the ruins are time sensitive. So it is worth sending people in sooner rather than later when you can. Uh, what should I do with... No, you know what? I'll send you in as well. Jubei. Send him in and that should be enough. Everyone else can stay here, I think. Oh yeah, I was going to ask. I figured that's what you were talking about, The Last of Us. Uh, so how come you refunded it without playing it? Um, have you just heard, heard bad things about it so far? Honestly, I haven't heard much. I've just heard like... Um, ooh, counter... Oh my god, he has one hit point left. I knew that was risky. I didn't realize he'd be able to do that much damage. Whew. Okay. Um, yeah, so tell me about Last of Us 2. Is it really disappointing, hey? I haven't, um... I haven't been following it much, because I... I mean, I've played the first game. Uh, one of my friends bought it for me. Uh, I bought him a copy of, I think, Metro... 20, oh, Metro Collection or something, and he bought me a copy of uh, The Last of Us. We did like a game trade. But, uh, I mean, I played it. It was fun. But, I mean, it was nothing... I, I didn't think it was anything that special. So, uh, I wasn't really looking forward to the sequel. And I don't have a PlayStation 4, so I couldn't play it anyway. But I've been hearing a few people say they're disappointed with it. Um, I'm going to send him as well, because he can fly. Yeah, which is a shame, because I know a lot of people were really looking forward to playing it, so... Well, what's actually happened? Is it just, like, people saying it's boring, or it's not as good as the first one? This blue dragon is pretty powerful, actually. Come on, we've got get, to get these guys away. Okay, yeah. Oh, I've played it. I've played part one on PS3. Uh, like I said, my friend got me a copy of it. Of um, part one. When we did like a game swap. I bought him a copy of Metro... The Metro Redu Redux Collection, I think it's called. Uh, and he got me a copy of The Last of Us. But, um, yeah, like I said, like I, I thought it was fine. I thought it's it's a decent game, but um, I I don't know. Like I didn't I wasn't that impressed with it that I was like, you know, really looking forward to a sequel. It was fun, but I wasn't that excited. A total disaster. That sounds rough.
No, all good, all good. So you couldn't finish The Last of Us Part 1, Fiery? Just didn't enjoy it, or...? Alright, let's get this guy healed up, because he is so dangerously low on health. Yeah, uh, look, I thought the gameplay was okay. Again, it just felt... To me, it felt like... A very... I don't, know, I don't want to say, like, standard game. It just felt... Well, maybe it did. Like, it just felt very... Kind of generic, I guess. Like, not to say it was bad, but it's just... I've, everything that The Last of Us did... I've done somewhere else. I'd played somewhere else, and often just as good or better. The story was fine. Like, I thought the story was just a... I don't know, like, people sort of rave about the story... In The Last of Us. And I will say, it's very... It's a very polished game. Like, it's a very... It's an extremely polished game. Very good voice acting. Nice graphics. Great atmosphere. But, like, I mean... I, I don't know. Again, it was one of those things where it's like... Yeah, I've played a lot of games with very good stories. And The Last of Us didn't really... Like, strike me as something special compared to a lot of... Like, games that I really enjoyed the story or the atmosphere or the characters... So, to me, it just felt like any other game. Um, and again, that's not saying it's bad. It just didn't... It didn't click with me as much as uh, it did with some people. For someone who doesn't play that many games, it wasn't a big deal. Do you mean the other way around? Because I feel like The Last of Us was... Um, like, most people I know who who really liked The Last of Us were people that don't get to play many games. Like, my friends who love it, and I've got some friends who, like, adore it, they only really get to play, like... Um, like, FIFA, or, you know, sometimes Assassin's Creed and stuff like that. Oh, how am I going to get this minecart back? I'm going to have to send someone to go get it. Okay. Oh, this is confusing. Look at these ruins. Oh my goodness. Alright, I'm just going to have to follow this thief around. This is wild. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I know what you mean. I mean, again, I wouldn't say it was mediocre. It was just... Oh, I, I, don't know how to, I, I don't know how to say it, to be honest. I guess, I guess mediocre is probably the right word. And that's not to say it's bad. I mean that in like the literal sense of it was just... Sort of um, unimpressive. Unremarkable, I guess would be the word. The arguments are regular rants about Naughty Dog being political in their story elements. Were they overly political in uh, The Last of Us 2? I, I thought The Last of Us 1 wasn't too bad. It had like, you know... Um... Oh, okay. Is it just people, I guess... Feeling that it's political or something, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I figured. I, like, in the first game, there was, um... Like, I think my friend mentioned it as well. Like, he said there was only about five characters in the whole game, and two of them were, uh, LGBT. So I know that had, like, decent representation of, of those characters. To me, that's neither here nor there, I guess, like... But I do know that they like to, um, I guess they are, like, pretty representative. 
Like, did they introduce more LGBT characters, or is it just the same ones as last time? I don't know what to do with this blue dragon. I think we're gonna have to hold the line here. Uh, who was it? I think one of the main characters, wasn't it? Oh, right, okay. Is that Ellie? Because she was in the first... She wasn't a... Except she wasn't a lesbian in the first game until... The DLC or something, I think, which I didn't play. So, I, I'm not sure. These, these mines are, like, confusing as shit. Okay, so this one will take me here. And where did the thief go? Hang on, where did he go? He didn't go up through here. Wait, maybe he did. Oh my gosh. Okay, I've got enough characters I can take all of these. You know what? That is accurate. It's a... Uh, it always felt to me like a very standard third-person action-adventure game. The difference is... They put a lot of effort... Into the, um... They put an awful lot of effort and a lot of polish. Can these guys actually do anything or are they kind of stuck here now? Maybe I can send these guys back because if I can't actually get... Anyway, yeah, I'll lift Cyclops for now, just in case the mines come back. I'm going to send the rest of them back, because they're more useful outside. Because, yeah, I can't get into those with the otherwise, so... Well, I'll leave two characters here, just in case something happens next turn. Yeah, I, I was going to say, like... I think the main difference is between, like, that and, and most other... Um... Uh, what was I going to say? Like... like adventure games is just the fact that oh man I can't really do much with this character right now I might actually leave her back here oh actually I'll be able to steal some magic points later so let's let's just do a spark spell on this actually let's do it on this guy because I think the sandworms are more dangerous yeah I was gonna say that, that it seems like the last of us um, more than most other, like, sort of adventure third-person shooter games, put a lot more polish into things like voice acting and cinematics and world building and, you know, all that sort of thing. So I think it was the fact that they... that production value was really high. It won a lot of people over. Not a bad little game. Just, you know, not remarkable enough to me that I was really excited at the prospect of playing a sequel. It wasn't really on my radar. Okay, now we're going to get smashed with freeze spells. Ooh, Blue Dragon might be okay though, because... I think they're partially ice monsters. Yeah, they're fine. Bridget should be okay, her magic defense is decent. Yeah, no, I agree. I think I think the first game, like I said, like the first game where it, where it nails things, is in things like the setting and the storytelling. Like the production value was great. Zombies are what they are. It's one of those things, I guess. Where am I going to go? With this guy. I 
should really finish off one of these dudes. I don't, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I always wonder why people, like in media, they're reluctant to call them zombies when they're zombies. I, th I felt like um, the monsters in The Last of Us were a bit closer to something like uh, 28 Days Later. Which, granted, we're also zombies, but, you know, they're like quick zombies. God of War 4 didn't impress me enough to look forward to its potential sequels. Oh uh, yeah, God of War 4, another game I didn't play. Again, no PS4. Um, I got some. Fr yeah, again, I have some friends who really love that game though. Uh, let's see. I've got to heal up. Let's do an aura level two. Should be enough, and that'll get everyone here. Uh, do I want to get Proden as well? No, should be okay. I'll do that. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, tell me, what's this jank Canadian RPG you're playing? Yeah, zombies definitely have a comfy familiarity, don't they? There is something fun about zombies. I've got to say, one of the, the biggest missed opportunities I felt in terms of zombie-related media was... Um, Uh, what was it? Sega and, um... Oh, what was it? The Yakuza game. Yakuza Dead Souls, or Yakuza of the Dead, or or whatever it was called. Um, I feel like that could have been so much better than it was. They made it into, like, a crappy... Like, Resident Evil kind of, but not as good shooting game. Whereas, I think, if you made just a Yakuza game, and it was just Yakuza, but the enemies were all zombies, and when you did heat moves, you were, like, just punching them so hard their heads blew up and, like, tore their arms off and... Like, just this... Just all the wacky, crazy stuff you could do with zombies that you can't do with humans. But in a regular Yakuza game, that would have been so much more fun. And, yeah, I was going to say, that's one of the... The top advantages of zombies is, like... They're humanoid... But they're not human, so it's not as violent. And you don't have as much guilt or as much worry in terms of... Oh, wow. I just turned the lights on. Okay. Now, I just came from here. And if I want to go... Uh, do I want to go... Through... Oh, jeez, I don't know. I'm just going to try random stuff. Where's this going to take me? Interesting. Doesn't look like there's anything more I can do here, so I'm just going to keep Spiral going outside. I think I'm going to send these guys back out as well. Meanwhile, Jubei has found something. What have we got? Potion! Okay, that's a bit underwhelming. Potion's always useful, though. Uh, now this is what I need. Uh, why can't I get around? Ugh, okay, I'm going to have to do it from here. But, she can steal... Oh, I don't have enough magic points! Crap! Crap, 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 okay. Ah, uh, damn it. I forgot you need a minimum magic points to steal the enemy's magic points. Uh, I've got a goddess tier that I can use. I don't really need to. Alright, let's just whack this guy instead. Yeah, that's the thing, hey? Uh, that's, that's a good point. When you've got like a non-virus thing, I think some people like shy away from supernatural and fantasy. So if you can do it like by making it seem like it's, uh... uh... None of the enemies are bunched up. That's a shame. 
Oh, let's just try whacking him. Mm, not much damage there either. Okay. But yeah, no, I agree. Um, some people seem to shy away from supernatural and fantasy, which I think is a shame. Even um, the Marvel movies were doing that. Which I thought was baffling. Because they'd get a character like Thor. And they'd be like, oh no, he's not a god of lightning and thunder. He's actually just an alien. And all the magic he does is just technology. And then they kind of made Doctor Strange. And wasn't that actual magic? So, I don't know. I, I sort of fell out of the Marvel movies. A long time ago. Last of Us 2, everyone turning into the Orcs from Warhammer. That would be interesting. What about Chaos? Is Chaos a thing in Warhammer 40k or is that purely a, a fantasy Warhammer phenomenon? Oh, this might kill her. Sure did. Um. Yes. Well, I, I don't know if I don't know if Yu Suzuki has abandoned the concept of supernatural elements in in Shenmue. I don't think he's abandoned them so much as there's a few theories around it. Um. There's definitely hints throughout Shenmue Two of the supernatural. Um. And hint. Well, there's there's hints in Shenmue One and Shenmue Two. About supernatural things going on. Shenmue 3 drops a lot of it. Um, and takes like... Sort of moves away from some of the supernatural stuff. I don't know if that's him changing directions. He's claimed that... Um, Shenmue 2, at the end of it, had a lot more supernatural stuff that they weren't originally planning at the end of the game. He said because... Apparently the, the mindset was we might not get to make three. So let's show our hand a little bit now. And show some of the supernatural stuff that we weren't going to show originally. And then when he went back, when he realised, okay, three's going to get made. Let's, you know, go down a couple of gears. And go back to where it should have been. With less magic. Um, but there's definitely hints of magic in, in Shenmue 1 and 2. So, like, in Shenmue 1, like, the mirrors themselves... Like, there's a lot of hints of, you know, like, oh, the mirrors are, um, you know, this this great um, artifact that's going to save the world from destruction, or the mirrors are, you know, spiritually linked somehow. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's anything else in Shenmue 1. I think there's a few things about, like, but it's very vague, like, sort of just referencing myths and legends. Shenmue 2... There's definitely a bit more. Like in Shenmue 2, like, well, the ending of Shenmue 2 is some very obvious supernatural happenings. Uh, I won't spoil it if you haven't played it before, for anyone in the chat. But even in Shenmue 2, when you're learning... Um, this might be a minor spoiler, but like in Shenmue 2, when you're learning the Kung Fu from the Janmin, uh, there's a character called Janmin who does like Tai Chi. Running Pepper, that's going to be useful. I'm guessing that increases movement speed. Alright, now where do I want to go? Ooh, there's another chest there. Where can she go from here? Alright, let's go to that chest. Um, oh, Goddess Tear is useful. Uh, let's drop that. Yeah, I was going to say, um, you learn from a character called Janmin... Uh, this form of Tai Chi, and he mentions to you, like, you know, that, um, you know, strength can come from within, and it's not all about physical uh, ability and, and the like. Um, and it doesn't sort of make much sense, or it doesn't seem to lend itself to much supernatural stuff early on, but the more you play, the more it reveals that there's a bit more going on in the background with some of the Kung Fu and some of your abilities than just uh, regular physical attributes. I'm making a bit of a meal out of it because I'm trying not to... I'm trying to skirt around what actually happens, but... 
there's a there's a great scene uh, in Shenmue 2 where you know you think you've mastered a technique and then this old tiny man uh, kind of shows you that you're still far from from being a master. You you probably know what I'm talking about, unknown, because I feel like you've played. I know, oh, I'm sure you've played Shenmue, right? So you've probably got an idea of which scene I'm talking about. Oh, here we go. Sorry, I meant to talk about. Um, so I was asking about 40k. Oh, so 40k has a lot of chaos. Okay, interesting. I'm not that familiar with Warhammer. I think it's really cool. But I've never actually uh, played it. I wouldn't mind picking up one of the Warhammer Total Wars eventually though. Because I am a big fan of Total War. And I think it's such a great uh, match. Total War and Warhammer. And that sandworm is doomed. Alright. I'm gonna be back in just a minute, guys. Just before I get back into it, boy, this music is fantastic. Oh, hang on, wrong overlay. Apologies. There we go. Ah, oh, this music's so good. The soundtrack for this game is fantastic. Alright, we've taken out all the monsters there. It looks like the boss is coming to get us. So, let's just get everyone into position and draw up a defensive line. I think I might have put her too far out in the open. The enemies are going to start respawning. And yeah, I don't... I mean, like, you know, I obviously don't know the... Every inner working of, uh... Of Yu Suzuki, but I... From what I've read, I don't think he's abandoned the supernatural elements. Because I was worried about that too. Because they are downplayed a lot in Shenmue 3. These Cerberus are so annoying. I also finished um, Gears 5, or Gears of War 5, if you prefer, the other day. Ooh, Dragon Rod, that actually seems pretty good. How do I get to him though? This is such a bizarre, bizarre map. 
There must be a way to get to that... To get to that one, but they don't seem to be... Oh, there's no cart there, though. I really don't know. Right, let's ride that one back, I guess. Hey, you two unknown! Have a fantastic uh, evening. I'll chat to you some other time. Yeah, I've got no clue how to navigate this place. This is so confusing. Alright, I think we're going to have to forfeit some of these treasures. But that's okay. These guys are pretty strong already. See you later. Yeah, this skeleton's definitely coming for me. But I can handle him. Yeah, Kate will take him out. Oh yeah, I was going to say, I finished, um, that's what I was talking about before I got distracted. Uh, Gears of War 5, I finished it because I had two weeks free Game Pass on PC. And, uh, it was very fun. I haven't played a... Ooh, I don't have many hit magic points left. Uh, what should I do, what should I do? Yeah, let's do it. Um, I haven't played a Gears of War game, like, single player since Gears of War 2. And the last one I played, even just a bit of multiplayer, was 3, so it's been a long, long while. But it was fun. It hasn't changed a bit. It's still big dumb enemies, big dumb cool guys, big dumb weapons. Love it. Very visceral, very action-packed. Actually, not as action-packed as I would have liked, if I'm going to be honest. There was a, a fair bit of walking around to, you know, just getting from one place to the other and sort of exploring. Um, but the firefights, when they do happen, are a lot of fun. And that's without getting into the multiplayer, which I imagine is also pretty strong. Uh, which means I do want to get back to... Oh, it's so hard to see... Everyone. So I've got... Okay, Cyclops is there. There we go. Um, I do want to get back to playing Mafia, because uh, I've got to do the... Uh, free Ride Extreme in that game now. Okay, where do I want to go? Uh, oh, this all takes me back to the start. I guess I'll try this one. Interesting. Well, I'm not about to to restart this battle just to do this again, so I'll let it slide. This is good, actually. I can get... There we go, and all three of them will get healed up. Alright, let's get this skeleton. Oh! Paralyze off the bat. What a prick. Let's get him, fellas. Oh, he's... Yeah. He'll be dead soon. He ain't that tough. Alright, let's see if you can equip the spear, even though you're paralyzed. 
Can you pull off a miracle? No, he can't. Sometimes I can. Sometimes I'll fight through the pain. This might kill him. Oh, it's very close. Isabella. Let's heal up Don Hood. And Spirel is going to kill him. Oh, here we go. Now we're getting that hill. Let's go. Ah, oh, yes, of course, we've got the second trial. Okay. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> Just jumped right in. That's the spirit. Someone's here. Testing the whole force. Interesting.
Are they gonna hit each other from the looks of it? So we're gonna need to get them to stop. I'm guessing it like cardinal directions from him. I'm gonna save. Oh, here we go. Maybe this is a clue as well. Save the game here. Try this out. He's got to stay put. Let's say we want him to move. Let's say we want him to move to the center, which means we want him to move the other way. The other two will have to take care of afterwards. So let's get them around the sides. This is interesting. I'm not sure if we've got the right idea, but let's see. healing all of us. Well, it's trying to at least. See if we can lock him in place there. Uh, now we need to get the guy in the middle to turn around. You know, we want him to stay right where he is, so let's leave him there. Alright, let's see how this goes. He can't move, so he's going to stick around. He can't move. He can move. What's he going to do? Aura again. Yep. 
Okay, I think we're in a good position now. This might be it. I think I can move him, because I don't think he's going to be... In fact, that might be perfect. Let's leave him there. Oh, they can move on to the centre. Crap. Well, maybe that's better, actually. Maybe the idea is that they surround him. Okay, I think this is the right way to do it. So this guy's going to move... Yeah, while well, he's turning. Yeah, we got this. I think we can just sort of like... Let the clock run out on this one now. Because the next turn, they're all going to move forward. Stop him walking forward. Ditto for you. Alright, I've only got one place to go now and that should do it. Well, they're all facing the right direction now. Alright. They're all going to move forward now. I might do it. Yeah.
This is a really nice effect. He has. He's become the innovator.
Symbiosami Asami is the vanguard here. Well ahead of us. And now we've got second level promotions. We can become champions of light, which is pretty cool. Oh, it's a whole, like, inn. That's really cool. Oh, that's sweet. We're getting into really far away from the territory now. pretty cool that like this community is sort of all had to huddle into this almost like a grand hall during the snowstorms useful. Oh, this will be a blacksmith. Oh no, I didn't want to go outside just here, I wanted to go to the priest. Oh dear.
She's backing down. Ah, oh, we have a common enemy. Let me save. Oh yes, he will. Good, good, good. I think we're going to take this opportunity to call it a night. So thanks for tuning in, anyone who did, and uh, I'll see you next time, which I don't know when I'll stream next. I don't know if I'll do more later or later this week, perhaps. If nothing else, most likely Thursday. So thanks for tuning in, and I will catch you all later.